every year I do a little operetta with first graders. They do understand in first grade that an opera is a, a play that we sing. We don't talk it, we don't tell it, we sing it. So at first they're a little bit, um, that's not something I've ever heard before, but then they sink into it and realize it's not, it's opera, but now we're gonna learn about it. And this is what it sounds like. Where have you been sneaking? We are here today for Opera for the Young's production of Rusalka, A Mermaid's Tale, which is a fairy tale that many people know, written by Hans Christian Andersen. Uh, Dvorak wrote this opera, uh, in Czech, and Opera for the Young adapts that original opera score from several hours to 45 minutes of kid-friendly English. I start with the story, The Little Mermaid, as an introduction, and, and we go from there, that this is a story you're familiar with. You may not always hear the words because they sing high, they sing really low, they sing really fast, but if you have that familiarity with the story, you're gonna be able to follow it and just be enchanted the whole time anyway. working without the help of scenic lighting or a conductor or things like that that we use to help make it all more glamorous. These singers now have to create that alone. It's to get up and be at a school at eight in the morning and know that we're having to um, be more than on our game, you know, to interact with these children and sing to the best of our ability um, is very, very difficult. But as soon, every single morning, as soon as we introduce ourselves, I mean, that energy is just through the roof. It's through the roof. And, and we haven't had a single experience that hasn't been incredible with these students. One of the magical things about this program is that 16 kids from each school have learned the chorus part. So our onstage colleagues are kindergarten through fifth grade um, kids. There you go, now you're an opera chorus. They know that they're doing something important, they're doing something that friends are gonna go, oh, I wish I did that, you know, and they know that they're a part of it. Squinting black and smelly. We had the same um, company come last year and do Hansel and Gretel, and the kids this year still talked about that. Are they coming back? Can they come back? Well, yes, they are, but it's a different story. We're gonna do Rusalka, and they were overjoyed. Absolutely worth the, the effort of teaching and designing and kind of pausing our, our regular learning, per se, for a while to do this. Absolutely worth it. This opera does end tragically when you see the grown-up version. This adaptation does have a happy ending. So these adaptations really are kid-friendly and um, you know I don't think we have anything in our repertoire that has anyone dying of consumption. We don't have any murder here in the school gym. So the story does get changed a little bit but the music is really the music from those operas. I want them to like the experience. They're, the majority will not be opera singers, the majority will not be prop masters, but some may realize that this is, this is someone's job to do this and tell this story and have this musical experience and we lost ourselves for an hour and I might buy a ticket to that later and enjoy it or I am interested in costume designer. It's, it's to plant seeds for later. <laughs> We hope that if a student sees an opera every year from kindergarten to fifth grade, they remember fondly opera as an experience and we hope that forever these kids know that this is a place where they're welcome, where they'll hear stories told in the most glorious way and that this art form belongs to them. <laughs>